iniquities prevail against me. And as for our transgressions, you alone will provide atonement for them. This morning, as we worship God, focus not just on the people around you or the culture of church or, or the, the coming together, as great as those things are, but realize there is a God in heaven who wants to know you personally this morning. And so I encourage you, lift your hands, close your eyes, eliminate distraction, and connect with your King.
to shine the light. We shine it through him. Amen. We've got one quick announcement. Well, we've got a couple. But first, if you have a Nissan plate number VXL064, your headlights are on. Okay. Was that a good announcement? That was led by the Spirit of God. It was put on my paper there. Um, what was that? White Nissan pickup. We will not watch anybody exit the building, okay? All right. That's awesome. It was awesome. So excited to be here. I love, I love coming to church. You know what? I just want to really um, e encourage us. Um, sometimes going to church is not a fun thing. Sometimes, sometimes we get a little attitude because we're going to go to church, we're going to see people at the church that we're kind of upset with that have kind of done some things that, that just kind of tick us off, or maybe they just irritate or aggravate us, okay? And if I'm not talking to you, just say, oh, you're crazy, okay? But say it silently, okay? Thanks, Dion. Uh, but you know what? And there's a saying in the world that says, but you know what? It's, it's hurt people that hurt people, right? And that's very cliche. I really like it because it's an adjective and a verb in the same sentence, which I think is super cool. But it's true. Hurt people do hurt people. So at the church, are there people that are hurt? Even if they're filled with the spirit of the living God. Even if they're born again by the blood of the lamb. Some of us might have an issue or an attitude, and we get to sit next to them in church. Right? And we're going to shine our light in Jesus' name, right? And we're going to do that. Amen? So with some announcements right now, I want to remind you guys that tonight, if you're a girl, we have Real Talk at 6 o'clock on Facebook. It's fantastic. Uh, we're up to almost 200 people now. It's really good. And, and we probably get probably an average of 30 people every week that are, that are active and participating, but it's a different 30. It's, it, they're rotating in and out. We're making connections, so it's real good. After church for about 10 minutes today, we are going to have 10 minutes, a short meeting for women's ministry. Anybody who wants to be involved on the women's team, not you, Dick, don't do that. <laughs> uh, uh, you're invited to come. It does not mean you are committed at that point. The, me the meeting is 10 minutes, okay? So if you get to that meeting and you think these women are nuts, there's no way I'm going to be a part of that, then leave, okay? All right? But we'd also like to give you an opportunity to have a voice to build the house with the women in our community. So 10 minutes, we're going to meet after church, okay? Also, prayer this Wednesday night. We had prayer on Sunday mornings before church. And another opportunity, if you would like to participate and be a prayer worker, people that come up here and they get to pray for people uh, to be born again, they get to pray for people for the things that they need prayer for, for whatever it is. If you are interested in anything like that, we want you. We need need you. I need to say that. We need you. So if you're interested, please see me after service. And I'm going to write your name down. It does not mean that we're going to throw you up there next Sunday. If you're like, I'm interested, but I'm just not sure how to do it. That's okay. It's our job to help you know how to do it and be comfortable in doing that. So say this with me. We need prayer workers. Isn't that awesome? You all know God, and you're capable of it. City Rock Youth, this Tuesday night, okay? And with City Rock Youth, I want to remind you about the YouTube channel. If you have not signed up to be a participant in that, that would really aid our youth group quite a bit, all right? Uh, marriage group this Friday in Beaver Creek at 6 o'clock, and Saturday out in Gresham at 5 o'clock. If you um, need any information on either of those, if you want to go to Gresham, where where are the Houghtons at? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, they're not in here. So, so they're in the back. So you can you can see. Can you raise your hand? So you can see Dion or myself about either one of those. Okay. And this is with the bookstore. We have a bunch of videos of services. And if you guys are interested in any of these, uh, these are absolutely free. So go back there and listen. Make a haul and give them away to people you work with, all right? There's some really, you, you might think, I already know all that, I've gone. No, 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 but these, these are great giveaways to people, okay? So know that, do that, and let's get ready to worship. All right. You guys may be seated this morning. If you need an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hand up. And uh, the ushers are out in the aisle. And uh, we're not quite ready for worship yet, Christy, like the kind I think you're referring to, but... Offering is worship. Amen? Amen. I'm glad we have it as a part of our worship service because it is worship. When you're uh, giving to God, it's worship. Amen? 
So go ahead and raise your hand up good and high. Uh, I do want to make another announcement too about uh, if you guys want your uh, year-end giving report um, for your contributions, Annie has those. So see her after service and she will get that to you. It saves her the uh, work of having to try to mail them out. So please see her after church and she will get that for you. Amen. Our scripture is found in Galatians this morning. It's uh, chapter 2, verse 9. And uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking. And uh, if you, uh, un- if you uh, have been with this church at- for any t- length of time, you realize that the Apostle Paul has a lot to say about your money, a lot to say about your giving. Amen? And uh, he is the one who is- wrote most of the New Testament, so we should be modeling our life after the things that he said and the things that he did. So it's Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, this is what he says. He says, And when James, Cephas, which is Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. I always like that, Steve, where it says that he they got the right hand of fellowship because the opposite is the left foot of fellowship. And that's where you, they show you the door. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so evidently Paul's life had changed enough to where he was welcomed in. Amen. Because there was a time he was not welcomed in, right? right? That's when he was out persecuting the church. He was not welcomed. People were actually uh, fearing him. But now he's been given the right hand of fellowship. It says that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcision or the Jews. So Paul and Barnabas are kind of commissioned to go to the Gentiles. And I like what he said this in verse 10. It says, they desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. Isn't that interesting? They said, we, they said we, we, you know, you go and preach to the Gentiles, but we just have one condition, remember the poor. I mean, they didn't give them a big bunch of rules and do's and don'ts and all that. They just said, hey, remember the poor. You know, um, I was talking to Christy here, and uh, I was just noticing before Christmas, it was pretty interesting because uh, there were a couple of celebrities, and I think one of them was Kid Rock. He went into, like, Nashville, Tennessee or something, and he went to the local Walmart, and he said, hey, who's ever got stuff on layaway? I want to pay it. And it was, like, well over $100,000, $150,000 worth of layaways, and he just wrote them a check, paid it. So when those people come to pick up their gift or their... They're present for their children or their family or the coats they need or whatever it was. They go, oh, it's been paid for. Here you go. I thought it was pretty interesting. I was asked her too. And I, there was another woman celebrity that did the same thing down in New Orleans or something. I couldn't remember who it was. But I thought, you know what? There, that's a person that is doing what Paul says right here. Remembering the poor. You know, remember these people, you know, they're, they're trying their best. They're, they're doing what they can. They put it on layaway. They're slowly paying off. But I want to make sure that when their kids wake up on Christmas, they're blessed of God. Amen? Amen. And that's who we are. That's who we are. You know, we should be that. We should be that person that remembers the poor. When we hear of people that are hurting or suffering or struggling, we should be quick to give and help them. Amen? And, you know, and expect nothing in return. You know, it's what, you know, I've learned this years ago, especially with, like, friends and family. Listen, if my friends or family, they come to me and they need money, I've always just had this attitude because I learned years ago when I was younger, just give it to them. Just give it to them. You know, because if you loan them that hundred bucks, man, and they can't pay it back, oh, I'll tell you what, man, they feel bad. You know, if you have a Christmas get-together, they know, oh, no, they're coming. They don't want to see you. You know, or if they're walking through the grocery store at Fred Meyer and they see you down the aisle, they go the other way. Because why? Because they owe you money. You know, they don't want to call you, you know, on a weekend. Or, or you call them and they see your phone, that's you, they don't pick it up. They let it go to voicemail time and time again. So I've learned in my life, when it comes to friends, family, neighbors, whoever it is, I'm better off just to give it to them. Because here's the other thing about it. Because you're trusting who? God. Amen. And who will repay you? Your Father in heaven. Amen. Remember when Jesus said, do not lay treasure upon this earth, but lay it up in heaven where rust can't attack it, where moths can't get to it, where thieves can't break in and steal it. Because where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Amen. Father God, as we give today, we thank you that we are blessed of God. We thank you that we do remember the poor, Father God. We thank you that you do use us, Father God, as Christians to help 
and minister to the needs of others, Father God. And speaking of the needs of others, Father God, we lift up those who are serving right now in missions, Father God, who we support, Father God. We thank you for them, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God, that they would be blessed, their needs would be met, they would be effective, Father God. They, weren't be, they won't be consumed with worry about finances, but they'll be used of God, Father God, in the areas that they're serving. We thank you, Lord God, for this church, that it is blessed of God, and it's making a difference right here in Portland, Oregon. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Go ahead, ushers, take up the offering. Hallelujah. We were driving into church this morning, and I was just praying, and I heard a word. Breakthrough. Breakthrough breakthrough so I began to pray out just speak out that word and pray out in tongues and in this song we're doing here it talks about slaying your giants do any of you have any giants in your life or have you ever had a giant sometimes it's your own anger or your own pride sometimes that's the giant we have to slay but I want to call you some things this morning I want to call you as the giant slayers. I want to call you people that rise up and worship in the presence of your enemies. I want to call you rooted and grounded in love. I want to call you strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Regardless of what's going on, you're giant slayers. I looked at Kayla this morning. I said, little girl, slay your giant. I told the team this morning, slay your giant. And so now I tell you, what is 2019 going to be? It's a year where we're going to slay giants in the presence of our enemies, in the presence of the world system, in the presence of circumstance. We are rising up. We're raising a hallelujah. We're ministering life to the unlovable. We are bringing healing compassion and all that God has for the people. Amen. Are you excited? Woo! You can stand up if you want. Kayla, go. Now I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a
sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Oh, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Oh, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Oh, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. Because my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. In heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of
my shame doesn't cause you to look the other way. And all my doubts, they don't change you, Lord, no. Cause you stay the same, and your love remains. So my fears, they don't scare you. And all my shame. Oh, 
Lord, thank you for your precious spirit, Lord. Thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, Lord. Yes, go ahead. Hey, you know, sometimes in the house, uh, everybody seems to have their act together. And, and, and worship is going on, and people are taking off in prayer and worship, and they're having a good time. But you kind of have this knot in your stomach. You kind of sit there, and, and I'm not saying you if it's not you, so don't say, it's not me. But if it is you, uh, and, and things are going on, and you're like, you know what, I just can't connect. I don't seem to know what they're doing. In fact, I wish I'd just sit down and Pastor Steve would start talking because I'm ready to go home. But you know what? God is saying right now, he's that rock, that steadfast rock. Yes. I remember when we go to Eastern Oregon, I go on this hike. And it's called the Tumala Trail. And Tumala means falling rock. And there's this great big giant rock. And every time I get to go on that hike and I see that first great big giant rock, there's like a peace inside of me because I'm like, oh. There's that rock. Amen. It's always there. It's yeah. never not there. Right. Even in the rain, even in the heat, even when I'm taking a bunch of young people that think I'm crazy going up that mountain, all right, that rock is still there. And you know what? That's what he is right now for you. He's saying, hey, everything that go on, that's going on in church, I'm just trying to lay hold of you. Amen. I'm just trying to talk to you. I'm inside of you, and, and, and I'm not just here for everybody else. I'm here for you. Because Amen. I'm your rock. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Amen. You can, yeah, that's all right. You can, you can appreciate them. Amen. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, before I get started, I just, I did want to, uh, you know, I haven't promoted a book lately. And I thought I would do this one because, you know, people find it, you know, kind of hard to pray sometimes, you know, but prayer is important. Amen. It's just you connecting with God. And this is a really good book. It's like a handbook on prayer. It's not complicated. It's easy reading. And it's a great book. And it's called The Art of Prayer, a handbook on how to pray. You know, a lot of people just don't know how to pray. And there's two ways that I learned on how to pray. Uh, when I was a, a new believer. And the first one was I met up with a bunch of people and they prayed. Well, three of them was my <laughs> wife and her two and uh, her sisters in the Lord, but they were twin sisters, Chris and Kathy McCormick. And, and they would pray. And then I, they told me, hey, we do this prayer on Friday nights. And this, my discipler, he said, you know, you need to come and pray with us. And so I went and prayed with them. And I just listened. And I learned how to pray just by being with other people. So if you say, well, I like to learn how to pray, Pastor. I, I can be a, I, you know, come Wednesday nights. We got people that have been praying for 30, 40 years. I mean, they're seasoned prayer warriors. They're, they're seasoned, you know? And so that's one way. And another way is read how people, how to pray. You know, there's scriptures that Brother Hagen has here on how to pray. It's just a handbook on prayer. It's great. It's easy reading. It's not difficult. And it's not like, you know, pie, pie in the sky stuff that you can't grasp. It's very simple. Amen. It's very, very simple. All right. Well, let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for just this, your presence in this place, God. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for vision. We thank you, Lord, for the vision that you've placed in my heart and Annie's. And we thank you, Lord. I thank you for our, our ministry team, our, uh, uh, th those that are called alongside of us, Lord. We thank you that, that we're all in this together. And, and the church, the, uh, this Southeast Christian Center, we're all in this together to fulfill what you have placed in my heart, Lord. And, and, and I just thank you, Lord. I can't do it. And, Lord, we can't do it unless you build the house. We labor in vain. So, Father, we thank you for vision. I thank you for these people here that can fulfill it. Even those that are missing today, they'll be a part of it. And we will accomplish great things for your kingdom and for your glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. So, the vision of this church is pretty simple. Connect, grow, and serve. It's that simple. Connect, grow, and serve. Somebody asks you sometimes, what's the vision of your church? All you have to say is connect, grow, and serve. It's that simple. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, then you can go on and, you know, you can, well, you could, 
uh, uh, well, here's a uh, ten, ten, uh, you know, a, a dollar word or whatever, pontificate, you know, <laughs> on that. So I went la uh, two weeks ago, I did connect. And it just says very simply, connection is the first and mo most important part of the vision of this church. And that is, number one, is you connecting with your heavenly father through Jesus Christ. And his Holy Spirit, amen, that resides in us. That would be the first thing. How do we do this? We do it through the word. We do it through worship. We do it through prayer. And we do it with time with him, amen? And then the next one is just, I'm just reviewing this. I'll get into the, uh, the, the grow and serve. So we do this with the next of importance is believer with believer. Yes. You know, people, a lot of times you all hear uh, what happened. Why, what was uh, people didn't connect with the church? What was problem? Well, people just weren't friendly. They didn't, they didn't want to connect with me. You know, I, I, I was just talking to a, uh, somebody just recently. They said, they said the pastor never talked to them, never greeted them or anything. And that, that's not me. Uh, I mean, I love people. Okay, but uh, some people are shy. The first pastor that I had was oh really God. shy guy. I mean, you'd, you'd be surprised how shy he was. Uh, he'd, he could speak in front of 100, 200, 300, 400 people. Easy. You know, he was speaking in front of 1,000. But you get him off by himself, he, could hardly, he couldn't carry on a conversation hardly. And so, that, uh, but you got to connect. We want to connect with each other. How do we do that? Well, through services. Okay. We also do it through home groups. We have our marriage groups. You say, you know, you're married here, and you say, well, I just can't seem to connect. Have you gone to a meeting? Right. Need to go to a meeting. Yeah. Need to meet people. Need to find out how their marriage is doing and how it isn't doing. <laughs> you know, I mean, just normal stuff that people go through, marriages, you know. And, and so you need, that's a way to connect. Yeah. There's another, you know, and then we also, that's a reason why we have Converge Sunday. And we all come together for communion and then we have a, a meal in the back. That's how, you know, I, that's how I meet people. I, where I really get to connect with people because I've got time now. It's not just hi, bye. I mean, I spent... Uh, uh, last uh, Sunday talking to a guy for 15, 20 minutes that comes here, uh, uh, you know, on a fairly regular basis. But that was my, that was my time to connect with him. And it's the same for, for, for you. And then lastly, we want to connect with this community. We want to connect with this community. It matters. I mean, the fact that we have got a basically a foot in the door with the David Douglas School District through a former youth of mine who is a vice principal of a school. I mean, hello, is that a God connection or what? Was that a divine appointment? I mean, it's amazing. And we were able to... to uh, 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 do two different outreaches at the uh, Fur Ridge School down here. And there's, uh, there's all kinds of different opportunities that we want to find how we can connect with this community. It's a hurting community. Yeah. Bottom line, it's a hurting community. And then there's your community where you are. Yes. Your, your neighborhood, your neighbors. How about, how about the people you work with? They're hurting. How, who's going to reach out? Who's going to be Jesus' hands? Who's going to be Jesus' feet? Who's going to be Jesus' mouth? It's going to be you. Because God says, you're my ambassador. Amen. You're my ambassador. And I, I, I mean, I want to go on and start preaching that. But you, you just think about the fact that the God of the universe, who created all of heaven and earth and everything, chose a believer, just an ordinary person. Not of great talent or anything like that. He just wants to use people who want to be used. Amen. He's not asking how, how good looking you are, how much, how much status you have, how much money you have. He just wants, do you want to reach people for me? If you do, I, I'm, I want you. It's like Uncle Sam, the old uh, 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 poster. He says, I want you. That's Jesus. They had to put Jesus' face on there. So I want you. You're my ambassador. What a privilege. I mean, I've said this before. Who, who, if the president of the United States asks you to be the ambassador of a country, hardly anybody ever turns that down. Why? Because it's such a privilege. It's an honor. And that's what he's done for us. That's what he's asking us. Just a, a, a simple believer that's in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ says, I want to use you. Well, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. So what? I wasn't always a pastor. I wasn't always a preacher. 
But I've always been an ambassador. Yeah. I've always been an ambassador. So that's a way to connect. It's, it's to connect with those around you. And then I went through several different scriptures. But I want to get to grow, okay? And that is in... Uh, uh, oh, I, wanted, I, did, I just, just saw this here. Uh, not only did we do Fur Ridge, but our, uh, uh, our barbecues that we have done in the past, that brought, that's a family comes here because of that barbecue. Another thing that we've had that's had a, a great impact around here is our Halloween outreach. I mean, when and I told, I don't know how many of you here uh, two weeks ago, but Annie and I took one of, we had a turkey raffle. And, uh, and we took this turkey to these people, that's 150, 160 something. And Stark or Burnside, I mean, it's not that close to here. And we asked the lady, we said, well, how did you find us? And she says, well, my mom lives across the street from you guys. And we've been coming every year that you've had it. And we love it. And then we had other people come over here and they said, man, we're so thankful you guys do this for the neighborhood and for you do this for the kids. This is great. Yeah, it's loving the neighborhood. Okay. You say, well, how many come to church? Listen, I'm trying to put our footprint in their door. Amen. And let God work on them. I'm sowing seed. I don't go and look and see if the seed's sprouting. I just wait on it. The farmer just sows the seed and then he just, he waters it. He does what he's got to do. And then he just waits for it. I'm, I'm you know, like in Mark, I'm you know, reading the gospel of Mark. And it says that the, a man went out and he scattered seed. We're the scatterers. We're the ones that go and scatter the seed. That, we're the ambassador that scatters the seed. And then you water that seed. Well, I, how, if I never talk to that person again, pray for it. Pray for the seed. Yes. Amen? Speak Pray good. for it. Speak What's that? Speak good. Don't curse the ground. Yes, seed. don't Speak curse good. the ground. Good grief. Thank you. <laughs> Grow. Growth comes from time spent with God. Hello? Well, you spend time with God, you're going to grow. I mean, you get into the Word of God, and you start reading that, and God starts showing you some things. He'll show you some wonderful things, wonderful truths. And then, you know, it's like James said, it's like a mirror. And you look at it, and then you go, oh, I didn't know I had, what, what was that there? What, what is that? So he, he's going to tell you some great things, and he's going to tell you some things. Jeez, I didn't really want to know about that. I, I didn't really like that. I don't like that. You know, there's a lot in the Bible I don't like that it says about me. But I like to be conformed to the image of Jesus. So if I'm going to be conformed in the image of Jesus, then I'm going to have to change. There's going to be some things that I've got to change. And, and I may not like it, but I tell you what, God only does it because God only looks out for my best interest. It's all, that's all. All he has ever done for mankind. Yes. That's the agape love of God. That he always looks out for the best interests of mankind. Everything that God has ever done for mankind. It's always about their best interest. That's agape love. That's how much he loves us. That he will do whatever it takes. To win us. To keep us. And to get us conformed to the son. Amen. Amen. So discipleship. So growth comes time spent with God and believers. How I many you know you need discipleship discipleship fosters growth it's for everyone you know i need discipleship oh, wait a minute you're the, you're a pastor do you don't oh yes i do i need people to speak into my life i need people to to uh, i trust my i trust my staff that they will speak into my life that they will teach me I, I need to be teachable. I mean, I, if there's one thing I learned in Bible school, it was, I think it was Keith Moore said, be teachable, be teachable, be teachable. The minute I stop being teachable or I say, oh, I already know that, I'm done. Yes. If I think I'm a, I have arrived, I'm finished. If you think you have arrived, you've, you're finished. You've never arrived. So... I want to be taught. So I, I, I mean, I not only depend on the staff here, but I also depend on pastor friends of mine. I depend on them to speak into my life. I mean, uh, I, I, I talk to them all the time. Give me some feedback. 
What, what do you know about this? How, 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 how can I deal with this situation? And, they, and then you know who else will speak in tomorrow? My wife. She doesn't have any problem telling me. Hey. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, she, it, it, I'm telling you what, husbands, you need to listen to your wife. And vice versa. And, well, and vice versa, but I tell you what, you know, the crazy thing, women are, are so intuitive, it's amazing. You know, it, it's, it's crazy. It, it's almost not fair. It's like, it's like with my mom. My mom knew everything I was doing, and I, she wasn't even there. And I used to, it just to drive me nuts. I used to, how does she know? I used to talk to my brother. He goes, how does, how does she know that we're doing, we're not, I'm not up to any good. And, and we didn't figure it out until later. It, it was be, because she knows us. Yeah. She's been watching us since we're in those little guys. Getting into trouble. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> that we do have a reputation in East Moreland. I'm sorry for that, but. But it's for everybody. Another way we connect is through women's meetings, like Christie's. Um, uh, 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 thank you, real talk and chit chat. Yes. And, and Annie thought it was chit chat, but it's what well, it is chit chat. And it, but chicks are doing it. Yeah. So, but uh, this is a great this is a great way for you to be discipled. I mean, Chris is a wonderful teacher. Yeah. If you aren't signed up on that, uh, you need to. Because, I'll you get a ride. Yeah, she will. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it's, a great, it's a great avenue for, for, uh, to, to just be taught yeah. and, and be taught yeah. to hear. And, and uh, so that, that's a great way. We have the, the Facebook outreach and then Chick Chat. Now, where, where do men fit in? Well, I've got good news for you. So... We are, I am going to be doing a couple of different things. One thing I am going to start doing, a Facebook, okay? I'm going to start doing the video just like Chrissy. I said, gosh, you know, why reinvent the wheel? I mean, the wheel's turning. It's working, you know? So I'm going to start doing How many men here uh, are not on Facebook? You get on Facebook, Michael. No, I'll just talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. No. no, you need, look, it, it is not that hard. To, you don't have to go and start following everything that's on Facebook, okay? Just sign up on it, and then you can follow the things I'm going to be teaching on. Now, I, I even came up with a name for it. <laughs> You're going to love this, Dan. It's called, I'm going to call it Meat for Men. All right? Meat. How many, how many guys here like meat? Yeah. You love meat. You raise your hand. You cook meat real well. Tim. Tim Shoemaker. Anyway, M-E-A-T, meat for men. We're going to talk about meaty things for men. Amen? And then the other thing we're going to do, once every three months, we will have a men's breakfast. Instead of every uh, month and meeting together, we just found out I got, some, here's, I got some great counsel from a great man of God right here. And he told me, he says, Steve, he didn't call me, he calls me, he doesn't even call me pastor, which I'm fine with. He calls me a little guy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a term of endearment. I don't feel bad. My mom called me shorty and I didn't even know it was, it's, yeah. Thanks, Mom. But anyway, <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to, instead of trying to, you know, meet everybody's schedules for breakfast and every, every week and, or every other week or however we're doing it, and trying to read a book that nobody would read the book, you know, they, you know, well, most people would. You did, Thumper. You were pretty good. Boy, he was thumping today. But that poor guy, he was, man, I'm telling you what, he was working up a sweat on Sing a Hallelujah. Yeah. Was that a great song? Oh, my gosh. Wasn't that a great song? And how about Michael leading it? I mean, come on. That kid's got some pipes. He's really talented. He's the kind of guy that I don't like. Got too much talent. No, he's awesome. He is. I'm just kidding. I'm picking on him. And I'm digressing horribly. But anyway, so... So what we found is, what we're going to do is do it once every three months. So in March, 
I believe that's where we'll, we'll pick March. That'll be a good time. So we're going to have a March, a, a men's breakfast. We're going to, uh, we're there, have it, we, we thought a couple different things, either having an offsite uh, or have it here, either or, but we're going to have that. And then the other thing I want to do is start connection groups with men that have similar likes, okay? Uh, I have found that uh, through just word of mouth or whatever, there are other guys here who actually like chasing that stupid little white ball around in in a beautiful landscape setting. And uh, so that would be golf. Yes, Cody. So... uh, so we're, I'm going to you know, put together some things for those that like to, to chase golf balls with me. And I will, be on, I will be on my best behavior because now I'm really, you know. I, I don't get that. I don't, I, I, I th- I, look, at, I throw a club. Once in a while, I throw a club. You've got to release. It's, it's, it's casting all your care. And I just cast it. I cast that care. Okay. Okay, and then... And then the other thing we want to do is, like we, uh, we mentioned, there's a lot of guys here, they're like, bang, bang, they like shooting guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of guys have got, got, got uh, like guns. And so that's something that can, so if you say, well, Pastor, I, I have, now here's another one. Some guys, they don't like golf, they don't like guns, but they like just getting in the word. They just want to have a time of just being in the word. Just have a time, you know, that they get together, could do it on a Saturday, could do it during the week, whatever, and just have a Bible study. That's another option. So if you, if you have some ideas on uh, how you would uh, uh, want connect, connecting with uh, and growth, really, for connecting, but it's for growth, it's for your discipleship, and that, uh, just come and talk to me. Say, hey, uh, what about this? Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Amen. So that's a good, that's another thing. And, and we found that, you know, men, let's just face it, men aren't as relational as the ladies. Ladies, you call a meeting together, they rah, come and say, you know, it's, there's a lot, it's busy. I mean, they like that. But guys, like Saturdays, what we found is we could get, we could get 10, 15 guys on the first Saturday, and then it went to 10 the next one, it went down to five on the next one. And it's just, because Saturday is like our day to get stuff done. You know, uh, the honeydew list, if you want to call it that, I, um, you know, whatever. You, I, you don't even have to have a honeydew list. There's just stuff you want to do. Amen. And so we just, we decided instead of doing that on a every other week or once a month, we're doing it one, we'll do it every three months and then we'll try and get, start these other groups doing that more frequently. And then of course me doing the Facebook, uh, teachings. Okay, now growth also comes through the word and time spent with the Lord, your own personal time. Second, Second Timothy 2.15 says to, well, it, the, I think it's the old King, the King James or the old King James or, yeah, says study to sh- show yourself approved, which is not really what that word means. Um, I'm trying to beat up on you King James only folk, but. But I will, because that's not what it means. It means to be diligent, to to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you need that time, not just with each other, but you need to set some time aside and just read God's word and let it speak to you. You you cannot live. You cannot be uh, uh, really... um, victorious and walk in the power and the authority that God has given you without time in the word alone. Just can't do it. You'll, you'll be digressing. You will not be progressing. I was just telling you. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I've done it. I've been so busy, get so busy with stuff that I, I, neglect the, I neglected the word. So you've got to have that time. I don't care if it's 15 minutes. You'll find that when you put 15 minutes in it and God speaks something to you, you're going to find out, well, that's not enough. I need more. So then you, you, you either get up early or you get home and you do it or you do it before you go to bed. Whenever you find that time and put aside everything else, because like I said, if you're not growing, you are 
regressing. John 15, do you have that there, Simone? John 15, 1 through 5. I love this verse here about I am the vine. I'm the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. Abide. I am the vine. You are the... Oh, and you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without, for without, me, you, for without me you can do nothing. So... What is he saying there? There has to be that word abide means to dwell, to stay, to remain. A, a, a true disciple dwells. He finds time to dwell, to remain, to stay in the Lord, to, to, to spend time with him that he bear fruit. It's all about bearing fruit. How will you know if you're a disciple? You bear fruit. Amen? You bear fruit. And people see you bear fruit. I mean, I'll never forget, I've told this story, I haven't told it in a while, so maybe a lot of people haven't heard this. But when I first got saved, I was, uh, you know, I played a lot of basketball. I used to play a lot of basketball. And I was up at this court in southwest Portland, and this guy was at the other end of the court. And he was, he had a boom box, you know, when boom boxes were popular. And he was, this boom box was cranking out this, this music. And I go, hey, that's, that's different. I've never heard that before. And then as I heard it more, and I was just saved. And I heard, and he was saying something about the Lord and, and, and glorifying Jesus and Jesus this and Jesus that and, and all this. And, and I was like, man, what in the world? And it's rock. It was rock music. I was like, what in the world is this? And so I just, I was a new believer. And if I could give a chance to talk to another believer, I would tell him, hey, I'm a believer. I just got saved. And, and so I went over to the guy and I said, hey, what are you listening to? What is that? He goes, oh, this is a, a Christian artist. His name's Keith Green. He just recently passed away. And I go, oh, really? And I, I go, man, that, that's that's, that's like rock and roll. I didn't know you guys did rock and roll. You know, or you guys, I was one. I said, well, I'm a, I said, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I didn't. I didn't know there was rock music in a Christian genre. And so anyway, I started talking to this guy. And I started telling him my testimony that I just got saved. Well, I got to be friends with him. And he took me to his parents' church and, and whatnot. And then uh, I, he had, uh, I eventually found myself, uh, the churches they took me to weren't really, it just wasn't a fit. I found myself at New Song Church, and, and then I lost contact with him. And about, and I saw him there for two or three months, and then I didn't see him for like five or six months. And I saw him at New Song once. He showed up there. And I came up to him, and we were just talking, you know, uh, catching up on stuff. And I was telling him about all this that God had done and what God was doing in my life. And he goes, and he says, Steve. And I was like, uh, he said, so I go, what? He goes, you know what? I go, what? He goes, man, you are bearing fruit. That's the first time anybody said that to me. And I was like, wow. And, and then I read John 15, and I realized, I've been spending time with the Lord. No wonder I'm bearing fruit. And then, he, and, and then the other thing I realized, he said, and it was about pruning. And I go, oh, man, I've been getting pruned a lot. No wonder I'm bearing fruit. I'm, bearing, I'm getting pruned a lot. So God wants you to bear fruit. Amen. He wants to prune you. And that when you are that, we are that tree with that, that we are off that vine, that true vine. We are a vine off of that and we are bearing fruit for him. Amen. And then lastly is to serve, to serve. Remember, I remember when I was, I don't know, it was pretty early. I, I think we did it in a camp a kids camp and we used to do kids camp at, at, at PVF and it was if you want to be great in God's kingdom you got to learn to be a servant of all yes. and I and that just stuck in my head that goofy little song and but you know what it's true if you want to be great you're gonna to have to be a servant of all and then because listen everybody has a gift 
Everybody has a gift and everybody needs to use it. And Jesus gave us this beautiful parable in Matthew about the one who, the, this, this uh, landowner, he, or, or he was, uh, no, he wasn't a landowner, but in any case, he gave out gifts to certain individuals. He gave one five, he gave one two, and he gave one one. And, and then he came back to see what they did with what they were given. The one that had five gave, got five more. The one that had two produced two more. The one that had one buried it. Didn't do anything with the gift that God gave him. Didn't do anything. And then the parable of the story really is if you don't lose, use it, you lose it. It's basically it. If you don't use it, you lose it. And so there is, what I, I, I try and get people to understand is the joy there is in serving. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor, if you're, if you're a worship leader or on the worship team, they're all serving. It's whatever you do that you will serve others, you will find joy in doing it. I, I, it, it, it it's hard to, you know, if I wasn't pastoring, I would be greeting. I would be an usher. I would be, well, I'd try and get on the worship team. And, but everything I'd play would end up sounding like bluegrass, so I probably wouldn't work. But anyway, but, but uh, it, it, you know, I, I would just find myself doing something because I know the joy there is in serving. The, 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 it, it's just, you, you, can't, you can't put a price on it, but it's so rewarding to serve. And you know what? Even, even the world understands this. It's like it, it, Kid Rock, Dion. He, he understands the joy of serving. He served that community there by buying all those gifts. Yeah. That was a service. And it was a sacrifice for him. We said, well, he's got tons of money. I don't care. He still spent over $100,000. <laughs> Why? Because he knows there's something about giving that's better than receiving. It always has been. It's always been that way. I'm more blessed to give than it is to receive. And then, uh, I mean, they get it. People volunteer. I mean, I remember people calling the church years ago and said, do you guys have anything that I can do during Christmas? I said, well, you know what you can do is you can go to any of the missions. They're always looking for people to help during Christmas and Thanksgiving, people that will serve at the mission. They're always looking for people to do stuff like that. And, and, and hospitals. You know, I had this guy, he, he, was, he was this, all, you know, he really struggled with, with alcohol use. And, and he was just, his whole life, he couldn't see much further than here. Because, you know, the, alcohol, the, the ism in alcoholism is I, self, me. Okay, and, and that's not just alcoholism. That can be a lot of things. You, you just, it's all about me. And so I told him, I said, you know what you ought to do? He, I mean, he was a good guitar player. And I said, you know what you ought to do? He said, I, you know, I don't have a job. I don't have this. And it's, whoa, 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 whoa. I says, why don't you do this? Why don't you take your guitar and go to Shriners? Why don't you go up there? Go up there and play for those kids. Go, I bet you you could go to their, to their activities director, and I bet you you could ask them, hey, I would love to bless these kids by playing my guitar and singing for them. I bet you, they, they, oh, no, we don't want that. No, of course they do. Of course they do. Anything that you could. I was trying to get him to serve, to serve some way. I couldn't have him on here for the, of all he was going through, but... I said, man, give yourself, give your gift away. Use it in serving others because it brings fulfillment to you. It brings purpose. It brings joy. Amen. And so, you know, you just look around here. You say, well, what's it to do here, Pastor Steve? And there's all kinds of things to do here. There's all kinds of things. We have ushers. We have greeters. We can use children when we have outreach. What's that? Sound. Sound. We've got, you, you know what else? Yeah, and everybody can give. Everybody can give financially. I mean, there's all kinds of things to do. 1 Peter 4.10 this is my favorite verse on giving. 1 Peter 4.10. He said this. He did say this. As each one has received a gift, 
as each one has received a gift. I don't think I got a gift, Pastor Steve. Liar! You do too have one. You do too. You have received it. When did I get it? When you got saved. Actually, you had it before you got saved. You had it before you got saved. You just didn't know you had it. And then what? Minister it. Minister it. Where? To somebody else. See, I try and tell people all the time. I got a friend of mine, he didn't come to church at all. And I said, and Annie says, well, why does is he, does he not go anywhere? He goes, he goes nowhere. He's against the organized church. And, and so, but we, we realize he's very gifted, very talented, extremely gifted, extremely talented. He doesn't understand, and most people don't. Church is not, church is about your gift giving it to me. I need it. You need mine, I need yours. Hello? Yes. And, and minister it to others. Where'd we go? Disappear. The scripture. I wasn't done. Yes. It said, receive, minister to one another as what? When those guys in the parable in Matthew, they were given a gift, they were a steward over it. They were a steward over it. They were supposed to, that one had five. Now he said, here's your stewardship. Do something with it. Okay? You have been given a gift. Minister it to one another as a good steward. God gave it to you. Minister it as a good steward. It's a grace that God has given you. It's an ability that God supplied to you to give to others. Be a good steward of the manifold, the outward showing of this gift that God has given you. And use it, employ it in serving others. Isn't that awesome? And I tell you what, when you do, you'll, 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 be, you'll, you'll be fulfilled. You'll, have, you'll really get a, a, a blessing from it. And then lastly, uh, what you need is to realize, you say, well, I don't know what my gift is, Pastor Steve. You know what? We have needs. Yeah. Fill one. Yeah. Well, I just, I, I gotta, I've got to pray. i got to intercede. Okay, then pray, intercede fast, and then find it. And then fill it. Yeah. There's a need, fill it. We have, we have needs, all kinds of different needs. You say, well, I, I just don't know what my gift is. Just ask me what a need is, and I will direct you to it. Hello? You can't say, well, I, I, I just don't know what it is. Just, you know, that, and I, that, I stole that line from Tommy Barnett. He said, find the need and fill it. And then you'll be, you'll be surprised how fulfilling it is. And it may even lead you to another place where you really go, hey, this is what I really like. Or you'll find, wow, I didn't even know I was even gifted in this. It's amazing what God will do. I mean, I, like I said, I've done every single thing that a church has, except for sound. I don't think I ever did sound. They did this, yeah. That wouldn't be a good idea. That wouldn't be a good idea. But, but other than that, I did everything. I, I, I mean, at, at New Song, I was mostly involved in outreach there. But when I was at PVF, I did nursery. Really? Yes, I did. And thank goodness that I didn't have to do any diapers. I didn't do any diapers. Not that I was opposed to that. Okay, I did my kids, but I didn't do anybody else's. But in any case, that's it. Connect, grow, and serve. I hope I've made it really clear what it is and that that's what we want to achieve for the next year and beyond. Yes. To infinity yes. and beyond. Yes. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Or better yet, I'm going to have Dion close. And, and before I do close, I want to remind you guys that we do have a prayer uh, workers that come up here and pray after service. So if you need prayer for anything, don't just uh, escape out the back. Take a minute, come up here, let them believe God with you, put God to work in your life, amen, and uh, have a testimony of overcoming, okay? So come on up. And uh, Chris, has a women's meeting. It will be in the back, at the very back um, in there. You've got a couple tables or whatever. So uh, women go back there and meet after you get prayed for, amen? 
All right, Father God, we thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for your word that we can, uh, Father God, connect, grow, and serve, Father God. We thank you for the goodness of your grace that has enabled us, Father God, to be used of you in the work of the ministry, Father God. As we go this week, we thank you, Father God, that you are with us. You will be using us, Father God, to impact our families, to impact schools, impact our neighborhoods, our workplaces, Father God, and those around us, Father God. May we go forth, Father God, and be your people to the world around us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.